To begin developing in C++ you should download and install an integrated development environment, an IDE, that supports C++. A good choice is Microsoft's own Visual Studio. If you do not have Visual Studio but would like to try out the examples in a similar environment, you can download Visual Studio Express from Microsoft's website. This is a lightweight version of Visual Studio, which is available for free. Alternatively, you can develop using a simple text editor, such as Notepad, although this is less convenient than using an IDE. If you choose to do so, just create an empty document with a .cpp file extension, and open it in the editor of your choice. After installing Visual Studio or Visual Studio Express, go ahead and launch the program. You then need to create a project which will manage the C++ source files and other resources. Go to File New Project, to display the new project window. From there select the Visual C++ template type in the left frame. Then select the Win32 console application template in the right frame. At the bottom of the window you can configure the name and location of the project. When you are finished, click the OK button, and another dialog box will appear. Click Next and a couple of more application settings will be displayed. Leave the application type as console application, and check the empty project checkbox. Then click Finish to let the wizard create your empty project. You have now created a C++ project. In the Solution Explorer pane, found under the View menu item, you can see that the project consists of three empty folders. Header files, resource files, and source files. Right click on the source files folder and select Add New Item. From the dialog box choose the C++ file template. Give this source file the name Program, and click the Add button. An empty CPP file will now be added to your project, and also opened. The first thing to add to the source file is the main function. This is the entry point of the program, and the code inside of the curly brackets is what will be executed when the program runs. The brackets, along with their content, is referred to as a code block, or just a block. This first application will simply output the text Hello World to the screen. Before this can be done the IO stream header needs to be included. This header provides input and output functionality for the program, and is one of the standard libraries that come with all C++ compilers. What the include directive does is effectively to replace the line with everything in the specified header, before the file is compiled into an executable. With IO stream included, you gain access to several new functions. These are all located in the standard namespace, called std, which you can examine by using a double colon, also called the scope resolution operator. After typing this in Visual Studio, the IntelliSense window will automatically open, displaying what the namespace contains. Among the members you find the Cout stream, which is the standard output stream in C++, that will be used to print text to a console window. It uses two less than signs, known as the insertion operator, to indicate what to output. The string can then be specified, delimited by double quotes, and followed by a semicolon. The semicolon is used in C++ to mark the end of all statements. To make things a bit easier, you can add a line specifying that the code file uses the standard namespace. You then no longer have to prefix C out with the namespace since it is now used by default.